You know, atmospheric pressure, something that we experience every day, but we certainly do take it for granted. 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's an awful lot of pressure. You stop and think about it. That's like a bowling ball and a heavy bowling ball pushing in on every square inch of our body. That's several tons of force. It's amazing we don't just scrunch together, but of course we've got our own fluids pushing outward and it all evens out. Is there a lab students can do where they can actually determine atmospheric pressure? How many PSI are we at right now? Well, it's a nice little lab I'm going to show you, and it involves this kind of unusual marriage. We've got one liter bottle and the cap, and what we've inserted through a hole in the cap is a tire pressure valve. Okay? We can show that it's uh, sealed in there, seated in there. It's not glued or caulked, it doesn't have to be, it's just uh, wedged in there. And um, this is a plastic syringe that has been sealed at the top part. It's also had its little wings clipped <laughs> so it can fit inside of this bottle. Okay? Simple enough. So, here's how this lab goes. Um, oh, and it also involves this piece of equipment. <laughs> Students should become familiar with this, a tire pressure gauge, something they can use to check their car tire pressure, and especially in these days when gas is so high, it can really influence your mileage and make sure you have the right tire pressure. So, some students have never even used one of these. Got a little bicycle pump I'm going to use to pressurize this, and um, I'll get this set up here. In my classroom, I usually use an electric one because I've got 20 of these or so to do. And when students mess up, it's easier for them to reset it. It's rather noisy. And you could say, well, why not just have the students do this? If I had a class set of these, I definitely would. But otherwise, this would be a real bottleneck in this experiment. Okay. So I pressurized that to a pressure gauge reading on that of about 65 PSI. This is tight as a drum now. And if you can get a shot of that syringe, you can see that it's, it was at about 10 milliliters before. Now it's down to around 3 milliliters. It's upside down, but we'll help with that, right? Now, here's how we do this. First, there is a little friction between the syringe plunger and the, the syringe walls there. To overcome that, we're going to release the pressure. And by the way, that little nubbin, <laughs> on the back side, that's what that's for, on the back side of the gauge. So we're going to push that down here. And we just saw the syringe start to move. So we've overcome that friction, and now we're going to start taking readings. Okay? This is an interesting little uh, situation. To measure something is to disturb it. That's true all the time. That's really what Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is all about. To measure something is to disturb it. Um, if I want to measure the pressure in there, I actually end up changing the pressure to do that. When I go ahead and do this, here's my first pressure reading. Okay, push it on hard, hold it, and then take it off. And I'm going to hold that steady so you can see. We're at about 33.5 PSI. We do the pressure first, then the volume, okay? And we'll do that consistently. But to be sure, as I just took that pressure reading, I did change it. So the volume of that syringe, can you see that? It's at around 3. Each of those increments, by the way, is 0.2. So I'm going to call that 3.3 milliliters there. It's just a little bit past the 3.2 mark. OK? Is that showing up OK? Now, that's our first reading. Prediction. Students have this. Have it. I have my students predict this. What's going to happen if I let out some more pressure, what's going to happen to the volume? Well, they already have an idea of that because they saw it start to move, but it's good to reinforce that. So again, using the back side, I tell them, the students to let out enough pressure to make the, the syringe change by about a half a milliliter. But don't take that reading yet because we're always going to do pressure reading, then volume reading. So here we go. Okay. Now, second pressure reading. I'm getting 
really it's kind of difficult when part of the gauge is covered there, but 25.8 PSI, it certainly has passed the 25. And a volume reading of, stop rolling there. <laughs> There we go. I'm going to call that 3.9 milliliters. Okay. We're going to do this for five of them. Let out some more. You see a little cloud effect inside the bottle when I do that. That's a nice little demonstration, too, if the bottle's got any moisture in it. Oh, I went a little far that time. That's okay. We got room to spare. Here's my next one. Okay. Um, we get a reading that of about, uh, I'm going to say 13.5 PSI and a volume of, that looks like 5.6 milliliters. I'll tell you what, I'll just do four of them. One more here. Okay? And we'll let it quite a bit out. Um, and our last pressure reading, this will be our fourth and final one. Ooh, this may not have much accuracy. That's okay, we got enough data here. I've got just past the five, so I'm gonna call it 5.5. We'll put a little footnote on this one. <laughs> Might be outside the range there. And um, I've got a volume of 7.8 milliliters. Okay, so one thing we can certainly see is that, and this is Boyle's Law, that's what it's all about, as the pressure decreased, the volume increased continuously. Is that a linear relationship? Well, let's find out. Okay? We're going to graph that in this top graph of volume versus pressure. And our first uh, pressure was 33.5, and the volume was 3.3. So 33.5 is right about here, up to a volume of 3.3. I'm going to write about, well, that's tricky, there. And uh, my next volume was uh, 3.9 at a pressure of 25.8. So where's 25.8? We'll go to the 26 line, then go just short of it, and up to... 3.9, right about there. Now we're at 13.5, um, that's right there, up to 5.6. Okay, 5.6 should be right about here. And the final one, a pressure of 5.5 and a volume of 7.8. We'll go up to about 8 here. 5.5. Okay. The students can see from that that what an inverse relationship looks like. Okay? I'm going to try to draw a uh, nice smooth curve through that. It's not a linear relationship. That's what they would predict. It would be just a opposite of a direct. It would be straight line, but it's not. Now, one problem with this graph is it doesn't look like you'd expect the traditional P versus V graph to look like. It looks like it's all been shifted over. It looks like it's much farther from this axis than this one. And there's a reason for that. Every one of those pressure readings I just gave you was not the actual pressure. I mean, let's think about it. If I do this, and then do this, and then give you a reading of zero PSI. Is it zero PSI in there? No. Those are all gauge readings. They're not absolute readings. There's zero pressure in here relative to the pressure out here. Certainly there's not a vacuum inside here, right? There's just one atmosphere. There's around 14.7 PSI in there. But this is not giving us that. In fact, every one of these readings is off by that same amount. We'll call it 14.7. Well, a couple things we can do to figure out, use this to figure out, is it 14.7? How far off are these? So, one of them is going to be using a graph. I'll do that in a second. But right now I'm going to go to the board and show you a little calculation, choosing, let me really pick any of the two of these data lines. Um, didn't rehearse this, so I'm just going to pick, how about those two? 
and give it a try. All we're saying is that those pressure readings are all too low, right? They should all have been higher by some amount we'll call it x. So if our relationship is correct, the Boyle's Law relationship is P1V1 equals P2V2, then I should be able to set up an equation with x in there as our unknown, x being atmospheric pressure that gets added to each of these two, and then we'll solve for it. Ready? So we have uh, 33.5 plus x, that's our unknown, times the initial volume of 3.3. And you know what I should do? I'm going to put PSI as the unit here, milliliters. I always like to put the units in there. And the other side, we're going to have that set equal to the second pressure. I'm picking this one down here, 13.5 plus x. Again, that's in PSI, times its volume, 5.6 milliliters. Well, we can see that the PSI milliliter units will cancel out on both sides, so an X will be in PSI when we solve for it. But having put them in there is good just to check that. So here we go. We're gonna, we have to distribute this. So here we go. Uh, Thirty-three point five times 3.3, .3. we have 110.55, really, just with two sig figs in there, I'm going to call it 110 PSI, oh, sorry, 110 plus 3.3 X. I always like it when the labs we do can emphasize the math they're learning about distributing, and then we're going to be combining like terms in a second. And 13.5 times 5.6 is 75.6, I guess we should just call that 76, plus 5.6x. How do we solve that now? We're going to combine the x's by subtracting 3.3x from both sides. Doing that gives us, I believe, 2.3x. And combine the unit terms by subtracting 76 from both sides. So 110 minus 76, I know I shouldn't be using a calculator, 34. Okay, that's going to be close. We'll see. 34 divided by 2.3 gives, <laughs> okay, gives us 14.7, 14.8. But in all fairness to sig figs, I really just have 15 PSI. Wow. It gives good results, not always that good. Um, you want to pick two values that are far apart. If you pick two that are close together, when you subtract, you can see how you're going to get down to just one significant figure. 3.9 minus 3.3 .3 would just be 0.6. So I pick two that are far apart. I could pick these two. You can pick uh, several of them and then average the value, so give you good practice on the math. How can you do that graphically? It's always nice to be able to do a graphic version of it. But if you look at this graph here, you say, I don't know, how, how could I possibly know how far I need to shift this to make it symmetrical? Think about it. Pressure and volume are inverse related, but that means that pressure and the inverse of volume would be directly related. So down here I'm going to do a graph of pressure, the same pressures, but the inverse of the volumes. So would you actually mind just writing these down so I can do them on the calculator? We're going to do the inverse of the volumes. The inverse of 3.3, 1 divided by, whoop, sorry. Um, 1 divided by 3.3, .3. I know it's about 0.3, yeah, 0.30, and 1 divided by 3.9, we're just taking the inverse of each of those volumes, is 0.26, and of course 1 divided by 5.6, we're talking about 0.18, and finally 1 divided by 7.8. This will really show us how good each of those points is each of those data points is because um, 0.13. So here we go. I'm going to graph those down here. We have the uh, volume, I'm sorry, uh, pressure of 33.5 and up to 0.30. So I've got to make sure I get this real close here. 33.5 up to 0.30. Okay. Got that. And we got um, a pressure of 
that's right here, up to 3 point, I'm sorry, up to 0 0.26, so 25.8 up to 0.26. Okay, finally, 13, uh, two last ones, 13.5 for the pressure, 13.5 up to 0.18. I had a big gap there, 13.5, 0.18. Ooh, that's pretty good, our linear relationship. And the last one, which was our one with a little footnote on it because it was really a low pressure and barely visible at the scale, but we'll see. 5.5 and 0.13. So 5.5 up to 0.13. Am I doing this right? No. Wish I had the 5.5, 0.13. I think that's right. Okay. That is pretty linear, even that last point. So what can be gained from that line? We're going to draw a best fit. Ooh, that is pretty, pretty good. Not perfect. Okay. And by extrapolating these backwards, these three points seem to be very linear. We're a little low on the mark there, but what the heck. <laughs> Look what we can get from this. Here is our value of negative, I'm going to say negative 14. You can close in on that. That is how much you'd have to add to each one of these pressures to have this line intersect at the zero, zero spot. In other words, this is our representation for our average, our average atmospheric pressure for all four trials. That's pretty good, 14, I got 15 on the mathematical. So, a really simple piece of equipment with some pretty crude measuring devices here, ones that are valuable for the students to know how to use, and giving some pretty, pretty decent values for atmospheric pressure in, in PSI. So it's a nice little Boyle's Law Lab, and um, not very expensive to run, thank you.